Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. So today we are going to be discussing a pretty new but a super fascinating, at least in my opinion, area of skin science and that is the skin microbiome. So we've all probably heard of the gut microbiome by now, which is the universe of bacteria and microorganisms that are living inside our gut that has such an important role in so much of our physiology from our digestion, our immune function, and even our mood. But did you know that there is another ecosystem of microorganisms that we are carrying around? So trillions of bacteria, fungi, parasites, archaea, are all living on, yes, you guessed it, our skin. So unlike the gut, the skin is actually a pretty inhospitable place. It's dry, nutrient poor, it's salty, it's acidic, and it's exposed to the elements, so temperature changes as well as UV radiation. But of course, mother nature has figured out a way to make these little critters happy to stick around. And we're glad that they do because the skin microbiome is a crucial element to our skin health as well as our skin barrier. Bloody love that skin barrier. So there's loads of different species and strains of bacteria that are living on our bodies and because of the different physiological environments of the different areas different bacteria will thrive in different areas of our body so take for example the palm of our hand it's pretty dry and it's pretty exposed so different type of bacteria will thrive there as opposed to for example our armpit which is closed it's often damp so there'll be lots of variations of the microbiome from area to area as well as from individual to individual so one person's skin microbiome will be different from another person's so our over hygienic society has taught us to fear bacteria but we really shouldn't do that because there is a good type of bacteria as well as a bad type of bacteria so the good type of bacteria is also known as commensal bacteria and that actually helps us to fight off the bad or the pathogenic bacteria by feeding off this bacteria and then through this feeding reaction they then produce metabolites that stop further pathogenic or bad bacteria from ever colonizing. So these good bacteria have a really important protective mechanism just as in our gut on our skin as well. So problems occur when there is an imbalance of the good and the bad bacteria. So just like when there's dysbiosis in your gut, which can cause things like IBS, digestion problems, as well as immune dysfunctions, when we have an imbalance in our skin, that is the characteristic of a lot of different skin conditions. So for example, with acne, acne is caused by an excess production of sebum, which is the main type of oil in our skin. This excess oil then clogs our pores and then our pores get bacterially infected. And that is when you see these big red cysts. But interestingly enough, it's not actually the amount of bacteria that is out of kilter when you have acne. So it's not that there is more bacteria there, but it's just that there's more of the bad bacteria and not as many of the good bacteria or the commensal bacteria that then would help to fight off the bad bacteria. So again, that is a classic example of an imbalance rather than being too much bacteria. Eczema is another one. There is a type of bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus, which actually aggravates and makes eczema to skin much more red and a lot more inflamed. So the commensal bacteria that normally feed off the Staphylococcus aureus is abundant in normal skin, but is often lacking with people who have eczema. So this is what I find super interesting from a therapeutic perspective because it presents a completely novel way of treating different skin conditions that actually works together with your skin rather than steroids, for example, that are just fighting it. So in the same way that you can now transplant the gut bacteria from a healthy individual into somebody who has, for example, IBS, a similar approach could be taken to treating different skin conditions. And there have been some studies to show that this is actually an effective way of treating things like atopic dermatitis. So if you're interested in reading more, I'm gonna link a few papers and studies that I found in the description box below because it is just so fascinating. <laughs> So how do we look after our skin microbiome? And especially for people like myself who have very sensitive skin, I can only imagine that I have also quite a sensitive skin microbiome or it's something that does easily come off kilter. So there's a few different things that can have an impact on the composition of our skin microbiome. So harsh climates, pollution, UV radiation, all of these things can have an effect. But also there's things that we are using and putting on our skin that can have quite a strong effect on our skin microbiome. So things that are too stripping, things that are very, very harsh, things that will drastically alter the pH, all of these things will affect and can potentially create an imbalance in our skin microbiome as well. So going overboard on soaps and antibacterial products, basically being too clean, is going to massively disrupt the natural population of bacteria that are living on our skin. 
Remember that a lot of the bacteria on our skin is actually helping us to fight off pathogenic bacteria. So by wiping that away, you are doing much more damage than good because you're essentially just killing off all those antimicrobial peptides that are protecting you. Another more surprising thing that can alter the skin microbiome is water and more specifically the temperature of water. So if you're somebody who likes to take long hot showers or long hot baths, that can also disrupt the environment the bacteria are living in on your skin and can also have an effect if you're doing it too often. So my personal philosophy when it comes to looking after your skin and just skincare, hair care, health care in general is to just be as gentle as possible. Use gentle products on your skin, you don't need to overload on them and be especially careful with the ones that have active ingredients, so things like chemical exfoliants as well as those very harsh cleansers. I personally also like to use things with more natural ingredients and I do find that the less I do to my skin the better it gets and that goes for washing and cleansing too so I find that if I am washing too often either by showering sort of washing my hands things like that then my skin does get drier and definitely more eczema prone and especially if I'm using antibacterial products which I know we have had to use a lot more in the past year. I also personally prefer taking lukewarm showers and that is actually just out of personal preference. I find it a lot more pleasant and even before I knew anything about the skin microbiome, but if you're somebody who prefers really hot showers, then you might wanna rethink this if you have quite sensitive skin like myself. There's also now loads of really interesting and exciting skincare products that are coming out onto the market that have loads of prebiotics as well as probiotics and even something called postbiotics. Although I should mention, I'm not entirely sure how effective they would be because different bacteria do different things for different people just because the composition of our microbiomes are so incredibly unique. But having said that, I'm still pretty excited and interested to try some. So if you are interested in seeing some more, then definitely hit the like button, hit subscribe, and make sure to watch the space if you wanna see more about probiotic skincare. So what makes the skin microbiome so exciting is that it really is a new frontier in skincare, both from a medical as well as a cosmetic perspective. We're only just scratching the surface in terms of the research in this area. And I believe that understanding the skin microbiome is going to unlock the key to treating so many different skin conditions so yeah exciting stuff coming up <laughs> so that was all for my video today i hope you enjoyed it what do you guys think about the skin microbiome are you interested in kind of probiotic skincare let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you haven't subscribed already and you want to see more videos about functional skin hair and health then definitely hit the subscribe button and i'll see you again very soon for another video bye